all held back, right? You got to research the tech, try it out, make sure it plays nice with your other tech stack. You got to then like figure out how to actually use the tech and get results. And then you got to make systems. And if you got a team, hand it over to your team. So there's a lot of things that have to happen and it can be a major time suck. When I was first starting out, I easily wasted the first four or five years of my entrepreneurial life uh, just dealing with tech like one one year one entire year because i surveyed my list uh, this is back when i was teaching animation and i was like what do you guys want and this was back before like facebook groups this is like 10 years ago and they're like we love a forum back when forums were a thing so i said okay great i'm going to build you guys a forum so i spent like forty thousand dollars on forum software and it was a full-time job building it out getting the content in there and it was just like I spent all my time on this on the tech and I spent zero time on sales or like like, you know, building my business. I was like working in it and not on it. And it was it was awful. It was a nightmare. So after about a year, I just said, even though I put so much time into it, I just pulled a plug on the forum and said, bye bye forum. <laughs> Never again. So I don't want you to be in those pitfalls where you're spending all this time doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. So what I'm going to talk about here is the different tools that we use. And now we, we've got a more mature business. I've been in business since 2016. So if you're just starting out, I'm going to show you the one software you need. But as you expand, then there's different softwares that, that you can use that, that are going to tie together. So the major elements you need to think about are your site and your blog, your marketing funnels, your sales CRM, right? Just making sure that you're not dropping the ball with leads, uh, your email system, and then tracking systems. So especially if you're running ads or anything like that, or any, any sort of marketing, you want to make sure you want to be able to track how people are clicking and like what marketing assets or, or campaigns, I should say, that are actually getting you results. So tracking is essential. We, we never want to guess when we're, especially when we're, when we're growing our business and we're spending money on ads and stuff. We really want to be very specific right, and know what's working. All right. So without further ado, site and blog, what most people do is they get WordPress or they get Wix or something like that. And while those are great solutions, if you have like WordPress is great. If you need a custom site, you need something with a lot of plugins and a lot of functionality and you're a bigger organization and you want to build everything from the ground up, then I recommend WordPress because you have full control over it. You can have it on your own server. There's a lot of pros to it. However, if you're a solopreneur, WordPress is shite. It's so confusing to use. If you have a, pl well, you have to get WordPress is free, right? But you have to pay for the plugin and stylize that. And those that's never intuitive. Then you got to get a server and then you got to constantly have security check-ins and stuff, right? If you get a plugin and it conflicts with another plugin, your entire, your entire, everything goes down. So I used to do WordPress exclusively. I was, I was building WordPress sites for people and I just left it. I, one day I just got, so I was like, this is awful. Uh, and so I don't recommend that anymore. Again, unless you're you're doing like a custom thing. Um, the other option is something like Wix, and I, I don't really have a lot of uh, a lot of exposure to Wix. But I know like if you're building like a very simple site, and you don't have funnels or anything like that, then Wix is going to be fine. It's like twenty or thirty bucks a month. So you know if you're just starting out and you're not planning on selling anything, you just need like a personal brand site, then I would probably do something like Wix because it's really cost effective. But what we use is Kajabi. Now Kajabi is kind of like the all-in-one tool. It's going to do doesn't really do sales, but it can do these these major elements of your of your of your business. So Kajabi is like 119 bucks a month. I'll put our affiliate link uh, down below. Um, Kajabi is really really powerful. And I was I just had a sales call last week, and someone's like, Hey Mike, uh, yeah, uh, do you really recommend Kajabi? I haven't really heard of it. And I said, Listen, Kajabi's been around for over a decade. I think in 2020 or 2021, they got half a billion dollars of venture capital money. So like they're not going anywhere and they're just growing uh, day by day. So I feel very comfortable building my business off of Kajabi. I'm not worried like tomorrow I'm going to go. My business is like it's vanished because Kajabi went belly up. So not a problem with Kajabi. So with the, the site uh, aspect of Kajabi, you can have themes. They have free themes that look great out of the box. Now Visionary Planner, I give you templates and everything. So you can have a really slick website and it's not even the website the look of it it's the content what's the marketing message what is the main idea behind your site 
that's going to, you know, what's the next step, the call to action that you want your site visitors to take? Typically, it's going to be to, to get in a call funnel, or if you don't have a high ticket offer, it's going to be to buy some low ticket thing. So you want to be very strategic with your site. It's not enough to be like, oh, I've got a, a site. It's like, what's the, what's the site meant to do? for your business. So again, Kajabi makes the site really, really simple. Next is the blog. Kajabi also makes it really, really simple to go in and, and do a blog. Now with Kajabi in particular, you want to stylize your, your homepage, your contact pages, all that, but you can also stylize your blog. So you'll have your main posts. And then on the side, you can build in sidebars. So you can have like social media widgets. You can have links to your offers. Like they click a button and it takes them to a funnel. So it's really, really powerful for that. And also in the site or in the blog itself, you can have a pop-up and you can have a button at the bottom, like a little, like a widget that has some, some other calls to action. So Kajabi again, makes it very, very simple to build all this out. And if you want step-by-step -step templates to build all that, then contact us over at the Visionary Planner because I've got all of that so you just literally fill the blanks in and uh, follow my directions and your site gets built out pretty much on autopilot. It's awesome. Okay, so that's the site. Again, I recommend Kajabi, $119 a month uh, at the basic level. They have different levels, but for where you're at, if you're just kickstarting and you wanna get that first product out there, uh, $119 a month's all you need. Uh, next up is funnels. Now, Kajabi does funnels and they're fantastic. The downside to Kajabi's funnels is you can't split test. You can use a tool called Google Optimize. It's free. Uh, optimize. It's hard, it's hard to spell and, and write at the same time. Uh, talk, talk and spell at the same time. So Google Optimize can integrate with Kajabi, and that's going to let you, in, inside the Google platform, do various split tests. I believe the free account, you can do up to five, and then if you want to get over that, it's like 500 bucks a month. So it's really meant for enterprise, but for just doing a couple little split tests. Really, if you're just starting out, all you need to do is split test your landing page, the sign-up page, the very first page in your funnel, uh, and and Google Optimize is gonna do that. However, I've got a mature business, so I use ClickFunnels for my funnels. ClickFunnels is uh, 100, I think, two, it's, I don't know, it's like 199 a month or 199 a month, I'm not sure. So all these little tools add up. Like we probably spend about two grand a month on tools here at the Visionary Planner. So if you're just starting out, you don't want that. Okay, so ClickFunnels is, fantastic if you're exclusively running ads into a funnel and you really want to split test and see the metrics kajabi last i checked this is like a year ago i stopped using them for funnels about two years ago because their metrics were way off i i'm sure they hopefully fixed it by now uh, but i my philosophy is if you're going to be running ads and spending like five grand you know five to thousand hundred thousand dollars a month on ads then i want the right tool for that job so i can really test the ads, test the, uh, the funnel creative, and just split test the hell out of everything so it, it converts. So that's why I use ClickFunnels. But if you're, again, if you're just kickstarting your business, use Kajabi's funnels. It makes it, so, you know, you don't want to deal with a bunch of different tech and have things break or, you know, it's just, it's a nightmare. It's, I, I'd rather you really get comfortable with one system and then you can scale as your business demands require it. So that's, uh, that's what I use for funnels. Again, Kajabi's gonna be great. And if you want to have that extra level of, um, split testing without having to integrate with Google, which is very easy, by the way. It's very easy to do that. But I do more than five split tests, which is why that's not an option for me. So that's why we use ClickFunnels. All right, next up is sales. So if you're just kind of like a solopreneur, you're just starting out, you don't really need a robust sales CRM. And if you don't know what that means, that's that's client um, CRM, client response manager, I don't know, well, client success manager, something like that, but basically, the uh, acronym doesn't matter, the, the, the philosophy behind it matters, is that you're gonna be able to see all the leads and where they're at in your pipeline. So what that typically looks like is you'll set up pipeline stages and you'll say, okay, somebody submitted their phone number, I called them, they booked a, a call, they, they bought or they didn't buy, right? So all the different variables that can happen, you wanna have some sales system. Now the, the ghetto version of that is you just have like a spreadsheet and if you're, if you're well, let me get into this. So let's say you've got a $3,500 offer, right? This is kind of an entry level high ticket offer and you wanna make 10K a month, you roughly need to sell three of those a month to make 10.5K. Now, you're gonna have a typical 20% close rate of people that book a call and show up for the call. So that means one out of five people are going to show up on a, one, of, one out of five are gonna buy. So in this scenario, if I wanna make 10K a month off a $3,500 offer, I need to get 15 calls 
booked and showed up. You're typically going to have like a 60% show up rate. So in this scenario, you, you want to be aiming to get about 22, 25 calls a month booked, knowing 15 of those are actually going to show up and then you'll close three of them. Right. So you can consistently predict if I get 25 calls booked, I'll make 10 K. That's what you want to have with your business. You want to have a machine. And once you can dial in that 10 K mark, then you can scale that exponentially from there. So, well, depending on the demands of the market, right? If you're, if you're in a larger niche, which you should be, you should, you should be in a sub niche of a large niche, then that's scalable for you. So going back to that, if you're just doing the, if, if you want, if your goal is to make 10 K a month, and it's just you running your business, you don't want to get into hiring teams and having the overhead. It's a lot of work, trust me. Then, then all you really need is a spreadsheet where you can track these 25 leads a month and, and, and just you know keep, keep a tidy ship, so to speak. However, when you get beyond that, you're going to want to use particular systems. Now, Kajabi, to my knowledge, doesn't have any sort of sales uh, process. But what you can use is Active Campaign, which is more of an email active campaign. It's more of an email um, provider, but they do have a CRM built in. But what we use is Close. It's Close, I believe it's Close.io. And we also use that in conjunction with another uh, service called Just Call. So um, we use actually these three tools. We're, we're trying to find maybe there, there's a better you know, all-in-one solution, but so far these are the three that work well together. So Active Campaign lets us have the emails going out, and the distinction is that I use the emails in Kajabi once somebody is a buyer. I call them a guest. So if you're a guest of ours, you're getting emails from Kajabi. But if you're in the marketing funnel for us, then you're getting emails from Active Campaign, and that Zap. So there's another tool called Zapier, which which lets different softwares speak to each other. So Active Campaign, if a new contact's added to Can Active Campaign, it gets zapped over to Close.io, which is our sales CRM, and then those those phone numbers get added to Just Call. So my sales team our setters can go in and start calling people and trying to get calls booked. So that's why we have this trilogy of sales softwares, if you will. Now, again, if you're just starting out, then I recommend you keep it simple. You keep your costs low and you just run everything through a spreadsheet and then you can manually, and you're not going to have that many people to call. Uh, so, so it's, it's just going to be a whole lot easier. You want to keep, especially when you're starting out, the less software you have, the simpler your business is going to be. That's why I recommend you just have Kajabi when you're starting out. And then, well, let me do another tangent. Um, the other, the main, so the, the main softwares you need when you're just starting out is going to be Kajabi. Again, 119 a month. You're going to need account with Zoom so you can have sales calls and fulfillment calls with your clients. And then you're going to need Calendly. So those clients can book the call. Now, Zoom and Calendly have free versions. You can also get, I think they're like 15 bucks a seat per month. So you're looking at like 150 bucks or less a month for overhead when you're kickstarting your business. It's pretty stupid, right? It's not a lot of money. Uh, but then as you get past that, right, you scale, then, then your costs go up exponentially. So going back, uh, let's go back to emails. So Kajabi is going to do emails for you. Again, we use Active Campaign. I, I, I've used Infusionsoft and um, Aweber. I've used everything under the uh, under the sun, and I really think that Active Campaign is the strongest. And it does have that that uh, CRM for sales, like I mentioned before. So what what Active Campaign does better than Kajabi is Kajabi is only going to let you send out one email a day. So if you're doing a campaign, like let's say it's the end of a launch, you want to have a kind of like a a lunchtime email that goes out and an evening email goes out. So two emails a day, and you're also going to supplement that with SMSs. So if you're at, if you're capturing phone numbers in your funnel, which you should be, in which in the Visionary Plan I'll show you how to build all that out, then you can use Active Campaign to automatically send out SMSs, and conversely, you can also use Just Call. So there's some ninja ways you can you can get these things to work all well with each other. So I recommend if you're if you're kickstarting, you use Kajabi exclusively for emails, and if you're expanding your business, you get something like Active Campaign. So you just have a little bit more functionality, which again you can send multiple emails out per day, and you can also send texts out. Another great thing about Active Campaign, if you're publicly speaking and you're up on stage, you're like, hey everybody, if you want to get my free thing, just text this keyword to this phone number. If you've ever seen somebody do that from stage, they're using a tool like Active Campaign where when somebody texts, it asks them back like, hey, what's your, your email? And then they type in their email and now they're added to your CRM. 
So that's how that works. So emails, I definitely recommend Kajabi. And then when you're, when you're expanding Active Campaign. And by the way, Active Campaign, you pay, I think the base is like 50 bucks a month for up to, I think, 500 contacts. And then when you get over that, then you, you start paying per the contact. I think you pay in like groups of a thousand or something. So like for us, I think we're spending like 200 bucks a month uh, given the volume of, of leads we have on our list. So that's that's why those costs go up pretty quickly. Finally, tracking. Now tracking, uh, you can use a thing called Google Tag Manager, GTM, and that's gonna give you some code and you're gonna put the code on every funnel and, and website page you have. So you can see how the, how the users flow. Now the great thing about Google Tag Manager is from a very high level, you've got the code. And if you need to go and change something, like let's say you add in, I don't know, let's say you're gonna start doing TikTok ads and you need to put the TikTok advertising pixel, you add it to Google Tag Manager. So let's say you've got Tag Manager on, let's just keep it simple and say you've got 10 pages that you've got your Tag Manager code. Do you wanna to go to 10 different pages and add that new bit of code? every time you got to change something or just go into Tag Manager from a high level, make the change there and know that it's pushed to all those other places. So that's why Tag Managers is really critical for that. There's other things you can do like Google uh, UTM parameters. So if you've ever like gone to a URL, like if you go to visionaryplanner.com and we sent you a link, it'll have some sort of like question mark equals and there's all this code. Well, that's a, that's a tag uh, from a, um, that's a UTM parameter I should say with tags in it. So. That's really, you don't need that when you're kickstarting things, but when you are expanding, especially when you're running paid advertising, those are gonna be really integral for tracking where, where the leads are coming from. Uh, because you're gonna be, let's say you're, you're running uh, TikTok ads, IG ads, Facebook ads, Pinterest ads, right? There's all these different places you're doing, you're speaking from stage, right? So you've got like 10 lead sources coming into your funnels. You wanna find out which of those lead sources is leading to conversions. So if I've got 10 different lead sources pumping leads in, but only Facebook and let's say, I don't know, Facebook and TikTok are the leads that are buying and everyone else isn't, then I know that I can stop advertising on those other channels once I get enough volume of uh, data to justify like, hey, this isn't working. So that's why that's really important. Now, what I use also is I use a tool called Jot URL. I think it's like 100 or $200 a year. It's pretty cheap. And that lets me go in and put a URL in and turn it into a short code so instead of like the visionary planner.com backslash blog backslash, blah, blah, you know, this big long URL, I can have a really short URL and even better, I can bake, I can bake in UTM parameters into that. So I can track when somebody clicks uh, within jot URL, I know how many people click that link. So I can see how effective that campaign is. Also, I can then have the UTM parameter start showing up inside of my Google account so I can see where the leads were coming from. So that's really, really powerful. And even better with Jot URL is that if down the road, let's say I'm giving away a PDF, right, or a lead magnet, and down the road, and I've got that link in five different spots sprinkled throughout my funnels. Down the road, if I want to go and make a revised version of that PDF, I, I can do it, get the link of wherever that's being stored online and go in a Jot URL. So just like with Tag Manager, I make the change in one spot and it and it makes the update in infinite areas wherever that is. So that saves a lot of time and a lot of confusion because the last thing you want to do is build out all these funnels and then have to find the needle in the haystack, you know, go page by page and link by link to, to, to fix something if you want to update it. It's not fun. I've had to do it. That's why... That I, I use that. So that in a nutshell is the software that we use. And again, uh, if you're just starting out, all you need is Kajabi, Zoom, and Calendly. And you're looking at less than 150 bucks a month. And then as you scale and you step into the expand phase, the costs go up considerably. So keep it simple for now. Enjoy the kickstart phase because let me tell you, when you get to expand, uh, it, it expands. <laughs> your workload and your stress level expands. So that's it for today. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment and I'll also leave our affiliate link for Kajabi if you want to go check that out. Uh, I'll try to get the link that has a free, I think it's like a 28 or 30 day trial. So you can, you can kick the tires on Kajabi and uh, use that time before you start paying to really set things up properly. And then as always, if you need help and you want step-by-step -step systems to build all of these things and make sure they all play nice together, then book a call with us over at Visionary Planner. Just go to visionaryplanner.com and you'll see buttons all over to book a call or get a price and just click on that and my sales team will walk you through the process. So there you go. All right. I had a great time making this video and hopefully you now are clear.